Hey, a pleasant good day, Flyers fans. As the season is wrapped up, this is the latest edition of the Grittiest Take. As I'll be joined again later today by the great Samantha Wismers, who's going to break down the entire Flyers season and the good, the bad, and the ugly of this season, and also go into how there's been some positives rounding into the end tier of the season via the young players like Noah Cage, Ronnie Adder, <clears throat> and of course Bobby Brink. And others as well. Linus Herkberg came up and made his mark. Igor Zamula looked solid again up in the NHL. Probably should have sold that one a bit sooner. But when we did, he did look good. Of course, the Philadelphia Flyers dropped the final game of the season 4-2. to two. They did look better in these rounding answers. Kind of similar to the game, the 3-1 to loss to Chicago where Kevin Hayes even said it himself. And I agree with his post-game quote paraphrasing that it, that they he thought they could have came back in that game, where there was a couple of saves that Kevin Lankinen really kept Chicago in the momentum driver's seat of that game. And to me, that's similar to what Anton Forsberg, who's a great guy that has always been good in the AHL, that's now developing into a late bloomer NHL goaltender for the Ottawa Senators, was exactly able to do in that game. The Flyers went up actually with the first goal with a vintage JVR goal in front. A guy that I think will probably be traded going into next season. I don't think that's breaking news. I'm going to talk about that with people in future videos and myself about like who I think will stay, who will go. But that one I don't think is breaking news. But JVR did round out the season um, on a hot streak to end with 24 goals. So that's, if anything, is only going to help his trade value. And then Josh Norris finished out the season with a bang. The 22-year-old that looks to be developing into a star... Uh, has now 35 goals on the season. Brady Kachuk scored his 30th when he had that massive celebration, which made it 3-2 to give them the lead. Owen Tippett also, though, this is something moving in the positive that I'm sure Samantha Wisman and I will touch on Tippett, but Owen Tippett definitely had that one-time blast. That's something you want to see going forward. This guy's generated a lot of high-octane scoring chances in games that he played. It's just, unfortunately, he doesn't always get the finish so he doesn't get the credit for how good his play is because it doesn't always show up on the stat sheet except for people like <clears throat> a good bit of our fan base but not always the national media because they don't have the time to watch every single bit of every game give Tippett the credit because he does generate a lot of changes I know JJ even brought it up on a broadcast smartly he generates I think it's like two points something high scoring chances per game high level and that's going to eventually draw into goals um Austin Watson then got the empty net goal but Basically, that game was just a microcosm of the better effort end to the season, which is exactly what I kind of wanted to hit on in this video before I go into the longer video with Santa, Samantha Weismer. The Flyers didn't go out with a bang, but showed better effort to round out the season heading into next season, which is a positive because especially the guys that really helped to up the ante and to up the energy of this team or all guys that, yeah, I understand the jokes that people make, like, oh, 10 guys won't be on the team next year. Maybe that is actually the case, but you better have one of the best guys at flipping the roster, which I don't think the Flyers do, and Chuck Fletcher, at being able to do that if you're going to get rid of that many people. But when it comes to the Flyers, Joel Fairby was hard to judge this year, but he did have really good moments. He started forming chemistry with Bobby Brink. So the fact that all that came together, that's two young guys really forming chemistry, and we know Fairby is healthy, in my opinion, he's going to be a stud. So... Those two are going to be on the team next year. Good to see them start forming chemistry. Frost, I feel like, is a 60-40. I would keep him from what I started to see at the end of the season. No, it didn't always transit to the stat sheet, but he was on the puck more. He should probably be a winger rather than a center. And that might just be the default case next year anyway, because if Tanner makes a team, he's probably your 3C. And then that moves Frost potentially to wing, and then Van Reems, like is probably off the team as a winger. So you have an extra spot as a winger at the very least. And then some people... And then if Lawton's move, like some people think, or Oscar, then you have other wing spots. So either way, you have wing spots available for Frost to move to the wing. But to round out this season, I thought Morgan played fine. I thought Tippett actually played great since coming in. He just wasn't always able to get the finish. It was nice to see him get a finish in the final game. I thought Oscar also is a guy, he's only on the final of his for three mil, so what the hell is the point of trading him? Because I think there's still a lot of room to grow there. He's only 25, coming back off the cancer diagnosis. No, he was not the same, but he also wasn't bad. Uh, he only reason his stats look 26 points and 77 is I don't think he got enough opportunity. He only played about over a little bit over 13 minutes a night. I don't think he got enough opportunity with the hire 
up guys like when Hayes was healthy, when TK was healthy. Yes, TK needs to shoot the puck more, and he openly admitted that, but he did bang in 36 assists, and most of them were primary this year. So he was able to play make well. So if you put on <clears throat> um, a Limblum with him, and I remember when that did happen early in the season, Oscar had a couple good, I think it was that two-goal game he had. Um, he did show out. So for me, that was more of a coaching thing than that was an Oscar Limblum thing and a lineup placement thing, how Sixers fans get on Doc Rivers for some guys not performing the best basically because of lineup placement. I feel like that's how that is with Oscar Lindblom. Um, but to round out the season, to wrap up this video, as I'll go deeper into it with Samantha Wismer, this video is going to be titled, The Flyers did not go out with a bang, but showed some positive signs heading into next season. And that, um, that basically is kind of what has happened uh, with this season. They show positive signs with the youngsters of Frost, Tippett, Cates especially looking absolutely ridiculous. Igor Zamula looking good in there as well. Uh, you had uh, Kevin Hayes come back, who likely is going to be on the team next year. Kevin Hayes come back and perform very well to more of the level of Kevin Hayes because it takes a minute to come off of that core. Stamkos is now performing as a god. Obviously, Hayes has never been to that level, but Stamkos is more back to his normal elite level. Hayes is starting to get back to his normal, very good two-way level. So, <clears throat> obviously... That can happen That's and continue to happen. That's a very big positive going into the next year. And the biggest one to round out this video is Ryan Ellis. The fact that Ryan Ellis gave us an update. We were kind of in nowhere land literally on him because there was no information being given to anybody in the media on him. But now that we know he seems like he'll be ready for camp, that's a godsend, a hockey godsend. And that'll be huge to see. Cam York will be ready by camp next year. Rista Linen. So you have all those guys back. Then you have the younger guys between Adder, Zamula, Hoogberg, Wiley, Brandon Manel, who they brought in from the Marlies organization that Chuck Fletcher has familiarity with, and Brett Flair. So you have different guys down there. And then other cats that are going to come into the Phantoms. As defensemen, they obviously signed Karinchik, Colin Felix, so they have other young defensemen that they're building up and butting up there with the Phantoms as well. But this has been the latest edition of the Grittiest Take. As I talked about the Flyers, not going out with a bang like the Lehigh Valley Phantoms did winning 3-0, but they did go out showing some positives for next season, moving in the right direction. They might not have went out with a bang, but they started showing some signs moving in the right direction at least. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below. We're up above with the Easy Dudes Widget to keep the channel growing to two. 50 or more by the beginning of June. Really appreciate you guys' love and support this far.